Telecom mogul Dennis O'Brien is one of the world's richest people, and he's finding opportunities in the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. The Irish billionaire is the largest private investor in Haiti through his company, Digicel, and he's now leading the Clinton Global Initiative efforts down in Haiti. In a conversation yesterday, I asked him whether corporations have made good on their promises to lend financial support in the wake of that devastating earthquake. I think the follow through is pretty good in the circumstances because it's you know it can be difficult from making a promise to keeping the promise because you have to work through government agencies and obviously the the government of Haiti is is you know is going through a very testing time in terms of capacity on that and what I would say to people you know if there are foreign direct investors who want to invest in Haiti they you know you can go around the government and just set up your factory or invest in the economy very very simply I mean we've invested about 450 million there we, you know we make uh, very healthy profits in Haiti and and that is the opportunity it's an economy of uh, nine ten million people and it's growing like crazy at the moment and from a foreign direct investment point of view it's a really attractive place to invest money yes there are problems but on the other hand your cost of labor the willingness of the Haitian people to work and to learn is just there's no there's no limits to it well, what are the opportunities distribution businesses um, uh, building building products because the whole of, the, of Haiti needs to, the whole of Port-au-Prince needs to be rebuilt. It's a huge task ahead. Uh, hotels, for example, uh, and of course in light manufacturing, in clothing manufacturing, which already has a base mm -hmm. in Haiti, there is a real opportunity for U.S. retailers to actually get supplied from Haitian-based uh, businesses. You're one of Ireland's most prominent uh, figures here on the business front. You're one of the richest men. I got to ask you what you think about about the state of the economy in Ireland right now? I think we're definitely on the turn and I mean one of the things that Ireland did, we did, we took a leaf out of the US, we fessed up early to what the problems were and we were totally transparent with the international financial community. So we have got a solution now for our banking crisis and we now have a bad bank and that is in train but also the government had made radical steps to reduce public expenditure. They've reduced for example the pay of public servants in Ireland by 15%. Now, nobody has done that in Europe, and I believe that some of the other countries still have a lot of bad loans and a lot of bad banks to fix up across Europe, but Ireland has done that. I think we get the credit for that, and we've more to do in terms of cost cutting in terms of public expenditure. Well, certainly with the bond auction this week, uh, that's eased the immediate concerns in some way, yes. but do you really think that, that Ireland's been rewarded for that? I think the concern that I'd have is that the opposition politicians in Ireland are throwing rocks at each other, mm -hmm. you know, at the government basically in the international media and certainly um, I think that's a bad thing, but I think Ireland is well on track now to, it's in recovery mode and I'm actually very, very bullish about Ireland. I'm not just saying that as an Irishman and as a person who's invested heavily in the country. I actually think the economy's turning and we can see that in our media businesses and we can see advertising begin to flow now and we're increasing year on year our advertising intake. And that's with independent news and media? Independent news and media, but also in our radio business, which is very, very much on the fulcrum. And, and you've been buying more shares in independent news and media this uh, year? I bought some shares you know, uh, maybe four or five months ago. And what's that about, though? Are, are you going to be upping your stake? You've already got a substantial stake in that company. Well, you know, obviously, I have three directors on the board. We're trying to help uh, remodel the business. Um, and, you know, the business now is stabilized. And obviously, there's opportunities for INM in the future. It has a few little things to do. Uh, that needs to take care of, mm -hmm. but you know, hopefully that business can go back into growth. Um, when it comes to Ireland and, and investment opportunities there, you told me in March that you thought there was a great opportunity in banks. If, yeah. if you wanted to get in and start a business right now in Ireland, that's what you would do. Yeah, well, I mean, Wilbert Smith, uh, his, uh, has, you know, has expressed an interest in the education. Shaw has expressed yeah. some interest yeah. there as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of U.S. Uh, investors who have run the rule over, you know, Irish banks and that. And Would you do that, though? Would you get in and, and invest in a bank or start uh, one? Um, I, you know, I, I was on the board of a bank maybe five years ago. It's too too slow moving for me. I like fast moving businesses. <laughs> but you still think there's an opportunity I there? I do, yes. Uh, what do you think of the leadership of, of Prime Minister Cohen and uh, Finance Minister uh, Brian Lenehan? I think both of them have had an horrendously difficult job to do and I think uh, Brian Lennon has been the standout foreign uh, uh, 
our finance minister within the European Union by a country mile. I also think our Prime Minister is doing a good job in very, very tough circumstances. Don't forget, in the last two min months, two years, there haven't been many wins. Yeah. And, you know, if you're the captain of the team and you're not winning... His approval rating's pretty low, which is, it is why I asked the question. That, that's a natural thing because of people's anger within Ireland, and I don't blame people's anger for that. But I don't think changing our Prime Minister is the right thing to know. How would you fix uh, uh, Ireland's perception problem if you don't think that the I, issues are as much of an economic overhang right now? I think, you know, it, look, it's all about communication. And um, uh, I think everybody will agree sometimes we haven't communicated as a country the way mm -hmm. we, we should have. Uh, we, Brian Lennon, as Minister for has communicated very well. And uh, he is about to embark on another tour of major financial capitals. But, like, you know, if you, you know, the, the Ireland raised one and a half billion euros yesterday. And, you know, that's a pretty lumpy si size amount of money in one day. So I think, you know, the perception of Ireland is changing. I think it's going to be much better over the next six to 12 months.